You may well know the Kia Nero as a hybrid, and if so, you're probably also aware that it can be a full EV2. You may not know, though, that you can additionally have it in a form in which it could be argued that you get the best of both worlds. That's the plug-in hybrid variant we look at here. If you're set on electrification for your next family hatchback or small SUV, it's hard to make the right decision on which approach is best. If you've rightly rejected mild hybrid power plants as being more hype than substance, that leaves you with full hybrid, plug-in hybrid or full EV options. And trying different cars with these different approaches might understandably merely leave you somewhat confused. It'd be a lot easier, wouldn't it? if the same design from the same brand offered all three options and you could try them back to back, uninfluenced by other factors. The Kia Nero allows you to do just that. We're now in this model's second generation and in this form, it's a good deal more sassy than the somewhat conservative original. Currently, most Nero customers go straight for either the hybrid or the EV versions without looking properly at the PHEV model we're considering here. Is that a mistake? Well, let's see. We had hoped that this second generation Nero plug-in hybrid model significant increase in battery size from 8.9 to 11.1 kilowatt hours might have brought a greater increase in EV driving range. In the event, if you select the provided EV button for all electric motoring, you'll find that it's risen to around 40 miles with this second generation model, up from around 36 with the last versions of its predecessor. As before, you get a more powerful electric motor than the one in the ordinary Nero hybrid. It's 83 bhp in this PHEV. But the familiar 1.6 GDI, normally aspirated petrol engine it works with, is much the same and in this form puts out 180 bhp via a six-speed dual-clutch automatic gearbox to the front wheels. Takeoff is smooth and if you flex your right foot enough to try and match the quoted 0-62 to miles an hour time of 9.6 seconds, the petrol engine will kick in quite quickly with a noticeable thrum. Best to relax the throttle a bit and go with the flow. It's certainly not worth regularly using the provided sport mode, which brings heavier steering and wakes the petrol engine up a bit earlier. The sport setting also changes the functionality of the steering wheel mounted paddle shifters, which aren't fitted here because annoyingly you don't get them with this test car's base two spec level of trim. Where fitted, the paddles are usually used to allow you to switch brake regeneration modes. In sport, they become gear shift paddles. In town, when you're merely using the E motor, this Nero feels pleasantly smooth and refined, and the electric motor masks some of the delay when the six-speed DCT gearbox is required to kick down. If you're a tower and need some element of proper EV motoring, this PHEV Nero variant makes far more sense than the EV version because towing capacity rises from 750 to 1,300 kilograms. At first glance, unless you spotted the badge work, you'd probably mistake this Nero plug-in hybrid for the full EV version, or possibly for the self-charging hybrid model, if you failed to spot the extra charging flap. Subtlety, as ever, with a PHEV, is the keynote here. But it isn't the keynote of this second-generation Nero model styling, which is a good deal more extrovert than that of its rather dull-looking predecessor, particularly if you avoid this base-trimmed version and stretch instead to top four spec, which gains a rather overt coloured blade covering the C-pillar. At 4,420 millimetres long, 1,825 wide and up to 1,570 high, the clean sheet redesign of this Mark II Nero is formulated on Kia's third generation K3 platform. 
Here in profile, the effect of this second generation model's larger chassis becomes obvious, extending the length by 65 millimeters. In this case, the wheels are 16 inches in size, but plusher versions get 18 inch rims. The front showcases Kia's current Opposites United design ethos, complete with angular heartbeat daytime running lights and a signature tiger face grille, which is now more decorative than functional. Even the rear makes a statement with boomerang shaped LED lights smeared up the corner pillars and a prominent roof spoiler topping off the tailgate, emphasizing this second generation model's 20 millimeter increase in width. Time to get behind the wheel. Inside, the dash you get depends a lot on how much you've spent. This base two-spec model makes do with the Kia's more basic 4.2-inch Supervision colour cluster instrument display and an older tech 8-inch centre touchscreen. This has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring, but unfortunately can't work with the brand's Kia Connect app. Further up the range, the car gains the smarter twin 10.25-inch displays this fascia was rather, obviously, better designed for. There's a more old-fashioned gear stick than you get in other Neros, but this plug-in hybrid does share with its stablemates this central touch-sensitive strip, which hosts either the climate controls or the infotainment system hotkeys, depending which of its two display settings you've chosen. All the right eco boxes are ticked too, thanks to a cabin headliner made from recycled wallpaper and faux leather upholstery fashioned from a bio-PU material containing healing eucalyptus oil. As with the previous generation Nero, the seating position is a fraction higher than the norm and across the range, the seats are well upholstered and supportive for longer journeys. There's plenty of cabin storage space too. Right, let's take a look in the back. Here's where the real benefits of that switch to this Mark II model's more sophisticated K3 platform are revealed, thanks to 20 millimetres more wheelbase length. There's space in the rear for a couple of six-footers. It feels almost EV-like, with more legroom than you'd get in any other class rival. Headroom's good too, and will be even with a sunroof fitted. Plus, the centre transmission tunnel's not too prominent, so if you had to fit three adults in the back here for a short trip, it'd probably be easier than would be in the case with most cars in this class. You won't be choosing this plug-in hybrid version of the Nero, though, if you prioritise boot space. Because of the placement of the drive system battery beneath the cargo area floor, that falls to just 348 litres here, down from the 451 litres you'd get in the HEV hybrid and the 495 litre capacity of the Nero EV, which makes it all the more annoying that Kia hasn't fitted either a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 split rear bench, so you can't push longer items through between a couple of rear-seated passengers. But fold the 6040 split bench forward and capacity rises to 1,342 litres. Prices for the Nero plug-in hybrid started at just over £33,500 at the time of this test in autumn 2022, which gets you this entry-level two-spec version. You'll need over £36,000 for mid-range three-spec and over £39,000 for the top-spec four version. These figures represent a premium of around £6,000 over a non-plug-in Nero hybrid, but you're looking at a saving of around £3,000 over an equivalently specced full electric Nero EV. Direct rivals priced and sized against this PHEV Nero include the Renault Capture E-Tech plug-in hybrid, the MG HS plug-in, the Jeep Renegade 4xE, the Kia Exceed PHEV and the Mini Countryman PHEV Cooper SE all four. Spend more and you could also consider the Mercedes GLA 250E, the BMW X1 xDrive 25E, 
the Volvo XC40 Recharge Plug-in Hybrid or the Audi Q3 45 TFSI-E. And if you're not hung up on the idea of a crossover, then you can add plug-in versions of family hatchbacks like the Peugeot 308, the Vauxhall Astra, the Volkswagen Golf. If instead of all of those options, you choose this Nero plug-in hybrid, you'll have noted from the list pricing we gave earlier that there's quite a saving to be made if you choose this base two-spec level of trim. Bear in mind, though, that if you do that, you'll do without the 18-inch alloy wheels and useful gear shift and brake regeneration paddles fitted further up the range. As we mentioned in our design section, with this base 2 spec, you'll also have to accept a considerably lower standard of MediaTek with an 8-inch centre screen that can't be paired with the useful Kia Connect app. Further up the lineup, the Kia Connect compatible 10.25 inch centre screen is standard, and top four spec trim pairs it with a more advanced digital instrument cluster display of the same size, along with a 10 inch head up display which projects vital driving information, including speed, ADAS data, and navigation commands directly onto the front windscreen. All versions of this Nero get automatic LED headlights, LED daytime running lights and tail light clusters, a rear spoiler, roof rails, skid plates front and rear, rear solar glass, electrically heated door mirrors, rear parking sensors and a reversing camera. Plus, you get smart cruise control with stop and go functionality. Inside, there's dual zone climate control, an artificial leather steering wheel, and in terms of infotainment, a six-speaker DAB audio system and Bluetooth, plus Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone projection. Safety kit includes forward collision avoidance assist, lane keep assist and lane follow assist. Should you happen to hit something, a multi-collision brake setup works after an impact, breaking the car so that it's less likely to go on and hit something else. There's also a high beam assist system to automatically dip your headlights at night and a rear occupant alert prompts you before you get out of the car to make sure you haven't left a child on the back seat. An e-call system will alert the emergency services with your GPS location if the airbags go off in a collision. And there are twin front side and curtain airbags along with a centre side front bag in the dashboard and a driver's knee airbag. Plus, you get Isofix rear child seat fastenings and active front head restraints that prevent whiplash. We gave you the battery range figure for this PHEV model in our driving experience section, around 40 miles. More than enough for a driver to complete the average daily commute in the UK. Topping up the Nero PHEV's 11.1 kilowatt hour lithium iron polymer battery to full takes two hours, 55 minutes using a 3.3 kilowatt garage wall box. The official pie in the sky combined consumption fuel figure is 353.1 mpg and the CO2 reading is between 18 and 22 grams per kilometer, the latter removing the need for initial VED road tax payments. You can proactively improve efficiency by making good use of the car's provided screen tech. A PHEV section on the centre monitor connects you through to a screen with four sections. Energy information, giving your battery charge percentage. Charge management for setting charging times. Eco driving, showing you engine and motor use, plus your economy history. And energy flow, so you can see what's being powered by what in real time. A smaller version of that energy flow meter can be shown in the instrument cluster, where you can also alter smart brake energy recuperation via a selectable eco vehicle screen. This Nero plug-in hybrid debuted Hyundai Motor Group's very first 5.5 kilowatt hour high volt positive temperature coefficient or PTC heater for plug-in hybrid models, extending the electric driving range in cooler conditions. 
The self-regulated ceramic elements provide cabin heating to complement the vehicle's heating core and ensure a continuous flow of warm air. There's more clever efficiency tech too, an intelligent green zone drive mode selectable in the same eco vehicle section automates the drivetrain's use of electric power by taking location guidance from the navigation system and either driving pattern learning or manual driver input. Built up areas or roads nearby schools and hospitals are designated within the GPS mapping as green zones and upon entering them the Nero will automatically switch to electric only driving to reduce exhaust emissions. You can also take control of green zones along your route by setting other areas in which you might wish to reduce this Kia's emissions, such as around your neighbourhood or outside the school gates. Why has no one thought of this before? Servicing is every 10,000 miles and should those mileages not be achieved then servicing is still required annually. And as usual with a Kia, you can budget ahead with prepaid servicing plans, courtesy of the brand's Care 3 package that offers a fixed price deal covering your first three garage visits, a package that can be extended to include five visits if you go for the upgraded Care 3 Plus option. In addition, a customer can now purchase services up to and including the seventh one, so matching the full length of the warranty. You'll also want to know about likely depreciation with a volume brand badge crossover of this kind of price. Well, that's reasonably class competitive. Industry experts reckon that after three years and 36,000 miles, the Nero plug-in hybrid model we're trying here would still be worth 56% of its original value, which is very class competitive. Insurance is Group 23A or 24A for top spec for trip. You can see why this plug-in hybrid model takes such a small proportion of Nero sales. The ordinary self-charging hybrid variant gives you strong economy without the faff of plugging in. And if you are going to plug in, why not go full zero emissions with the Nero EV? It's not quite as simple as that, though. Spiralling fuel prices make filling up a self-charging Nero hybrid ever more expensive and the disappointingly patchy current UK EV public charging infrastructure could deliver range anxiety wherever you venture further afield in a Nero EV. Such are the reasons for the continuing popularity of PHEVs and amongst cars of this genre in this price bracket, the Nero plug-in hybrid certainly has appeal, particularly in this second generation, guys, with its significantly larger battery. It's pricier than we'd hoped it would be, but unfortunately nearly all its competitors are too. At least there's a bit more want-one factor this time round. Unplug and play? That concept might make a bit more sense with one of these. <laughs>